So this is Jeff. No, this is Zoe. This is Jeff. And this is Charlie. Correct? Zoe is the female. Oh, that's Zoe. Okay. Who was walking towards you? Was it Zoe? The one who we're talking about. Oh, that's Jeff. Okay, that's Jeff. That's Jeff. So we miss Zoe. Steve, help me out a little bit here. Hey, cut it off. Come on. Here we go. I, I'll figure it out. Okay, here we go. So once again, the first dog is going for Steve. The second dog is going to the third dog. So I'm not sure which dog that is. I couldn't see that. Let me put that here. Come on. I'm crooked. Here I am. Okay. That's the first indication where these two dogs divide themselves in what they're up to in the future. Okay, here. Okay, Steve, question, and I want you to type the answer. This dog who walks towards you, who is that? Jeff, good. That's Jeff. Who is the dog who was playing with Jeff before in Pete on the column? Good. So that's Zoe. That is then Charlie, right? Good. So from that indication where Joy goes to his owner or to, to Steve and Zoe goes to Charlie is because he wants to protect Charlie from Jeff. Okay? Now, what I would do if I would Steve, I would see that picture here and start predicting that everything is about Charlie and Steve. Okay? Zoe feels challenged from Jeff the way he interacts. If we will move forward the video a little bit, let's go back to the video. I'll post it here again so everybody can click on it. And we go at minute 022. Okay, and I will start recording now so everybody can see that. Good. It's recording anyway. You have a new situation. Zoe remains here in the background. Sorry. Charlie remains here in the background. 
we have Jeff running into that direction and Zoe is blocking him off. Okay. Did everybody see that point on 022? Okay. So Steve was standing here. He was still waiting. Jeff suddenly starts being happy, right? And Jeff, uh, and so, um, that's Jeff, that's Zoe, and that's Charlie. And Zoe suddenly speeds up and cut him off the way because jeff wanted to go into the house so the clear message here once he claimed steve the next thing he claimed charlie zoe cut him off right away in the beginning and so he said well i don't get charlie i get the house and he makes a u-turn leaves steve alone makes a u-turn and runs towards the house and Zoe cuts him off. So suddenly things get tense to the point that Charlie interferes and cuts both off. She basically goes in between these two guys and says, whoa, guys, what are you doing? Okay, so I want you guys to watch that again from 014 to 022. This is where basically the first dispute is going to happen. And tell me that you saw it. And I want your feedback. Yeah. Here we go. Suddenly, the one Charlie who was in the background suddenly in, goes in between and breaks his part, these guys apart. So if we see that constellation, that's a constellation, right? We have an energy situation going on. So we see these two guys here getting in a dispute where jo Joe and Zoe, and Zoe is at this point very a very good guy. Right, he, he tolerates Joe to come into this house, claim Steve, claim his girlfriend, Charlie, but then Joe goes to the house, which basically says, okay, now I'm going back to the house. I want to claim that house too. And this is where Zoe kind of steps up and says, whoa, that, you don't do that. And immediately, Charlie picked up on that situation and went in in between. So Charlie is a problem solver. So I would want, exactly, that was a good marking. I want Steve to take over Charlie's job. It's not Charlie's to go in between. It would be your job to cut off Joe and says, hey, come over here. Not to correct him, to not let him claim it at the first place. Make sense? Good. Does anybody have questions or, or want to add something to that? And maybe you want to watch the video again. What I would like you to focus is how exactly the direction of each dog shows the intention and how the energy flow goes from one dog to the other. So if, if you make it like a diagram, and I'm going back here to the screen, okay? 
Joey went away from Steve, get the confirmation that Steve is his, so he has his backup plan, and then claims the house. So from here, stage one, he gets Steve confirmation, and Steve approves it by Oh, Joy, you're such a good boy, blah, 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 right? Joy says, okay, now it's my time. He makes a U-turn, swoop, and claims the house since he has the approval of Steve. And Zoe got that, and he says, no, buddy, you're not going into the house. And Charlie steps up, like, no, 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 guys, don't do that. Don't, don't get mad here. So Charlie is number one dog that I would like steve to call her a sheriff so charlie would be your your dog that you will use to evaluate every other dog she is the one who pick up the energy and stays away from it until things escalate and then she steps in and takes care of business okay so when Charlie is calm, then everything is okay. If Charlie gets tense, then things are not going okay. And that moment, I want you to interfere and cut the whole thing off, blow it off. This is off. We're out. we're done here. Let's go, and put everybody in place so everybody knows that you got that message. You know what's going on here, and you make a timeout for everybody. So how do you call the timeout? Hi, Diane. So how do you call the timeout? The first thing I use for timeout is the word off. And why I do use the word off? Very simple, because off sounds like a bark. If you yell off, it's similar that the dog is barking. And it will be similar as Charlie will interfere and bark at everybody. And off is basically for everyone. At that point, is you're calling the whole situation off. It doesn't matter who is there. And the energy, the way you do it, everybody who does something in that particular moment this off is addressed to. See it in an example. You are at work and everybody is working, okay? And somebody is standing up and goes to the coffee shop and he says, where are you going? Well, at that point, nobody will feel threatened. Only the guy who stood up to get a coffee will feel threatened and guilty for standing up where you ask, where are you going? So you see, even if you don't address the command directly to a person or to a dog, the one who does something wrong, he will immediately understand that you are addressing it to him. Exactly, Sophie, that's exactly, that's exactly right. So off is a timeout. At that point, everybody will stop at everything you're doing and look at Steve and wait for further instructions. That's exactly right. Awesome. Okay. Now, how do we get to introduce the word off? Because that's basically a command. Basically, it's not a command, really, um, because it doesn't go to the brain. So let's let's talk about this for a moment because we want to clear identify who do we talk about. So dogs have basically three areas. So let's symbolize a dog here, okay? No, it's not okay because that doesn't look like a dog. It looks like a camel. So we have a dog who looks like that. We have his ears. Are you laughing at me about my dog? Okay. And his tail. 
I know it looks like a cow. Let's go back here to our screensaver. Good. Here we go. That's kind of a dog thing. I'll get it. You're next. Can you guys see that? Almost. Hey, give me a second. Good. So we have three centers. We have the brain, who is the main coordinator. Then we have here the spline, who from the solar plexus, here are, you know, here's the solar plexus. The back time is fear. And then we have the front who is there can everybody see that so i want everybody to think for a second do you recognize where the fear and there are located and that fear and dare basically is not organized by the brain, but it's a reflex from the information that gets from the brain. So in extension, when fear is active, you will see a dog who has his back legs stretched on the back so you will see a dog with back leg stretched he tries to reach forward but he can't because fear doesn't let him move forward and you get to the point that sometimes the legs are so far back that the belly is almost on the floor it's because fear doesn't let that point here move away this is the safe space okay so the dog has a safe spot and there wants to go forward because he wants to interact with the target he wants to make contact so there wants to go forward but here says no freaking way you're not moving anywhere exactly martina exactly this is where the hackles come up because the other dog who's watching this dog he needs to know where this information is coming from does my dog that i'm dealing with is fearful daring or is he very confident and just dares so if he only dares you will see that his front hackles are up he makes himself really big if his situation is confusing that he's in between dare and fear then both hairs are up and guess what the brain has to figure out which one he should trust should he trust there to go and meet or should he trust fear and not going and meet okay let me turn my computer so i can see you guys better So does this make sense? Let me go further closer, right? Here we go. Come on, why am I so wrong with Okay, here we go. Let me let me switch off the other light here because I think you have a backlight. Better? And let me switch that light on. Yes. Good. Much better, right? Exactly. So neck is confidence. <coughs> and the back is fear. So if you see a dog who has stretched back legs and all the hackles up, 
meaning is he wants to make contact he has good intentions but at the same time he doesn't trust the situation and what does the handler do because the brain cannot figure it out and here's the equation you have one plus oh sorry my mistake okay you have one minus and you have one plus and plus and minus makes what do we have a physicist here what is plus and minus the result one times plus times minus makes minus Okay, and here's where the handler comes in and encourages the dog and adds additionally his opinion. Either he adds another plus or he adds another minus and change the outcome and how the brain will make his decision. Okay, so let's repeat that again because that's an important part. Whatever you do with your new dog, the first time, the first minute, the first walk, the first interaction, you want to know what your dog is dealing with. So if the brain, which is the organizer, has plus there and minus fear, then these two guys make no result zero so the brain will not make any sense he will wait until the trigger will give him a plus or a minus so at that point if the brain doesn't get nothing from his feedback he waits the dog or the item that he's dealing with give him something. If that dog or that trigger gives him a positive impulse, like a calming message, then fear will go away, there will win, and the brain can move forward. But if that dog shows an aggression, then fear takes over and the dog will retreat or if he dares he will attack so you see that if a dog fearful and dares and the trigger reacts towards that then the dog has fear and dare which makes him fear aggressive does it ring a bell do you see where this fear aggression comes from Do you recognize that if there is no dare and there is only fear, the only drive that is triggered is what? Flight. Okay. And if we have fear, and there then we have fight does it make sense good but this is only and only if the brain is off Only if the brain is off, you have flight or fight. Okay? Because if the brain is on, if the brain is on, then you have a social dog. And the social dog, what he wants to do, if this is on,
if the brain is on, he has two options. The one is calming, okay, or diffuse, or protect. and going into dispute. We see that the brain makes a big difference if this is a fight or flight or a calming message or a protection. So if the brain is on, it becomes a job. Either way, and if the brain is off, it becomes defense. Do you guys have any questions on that? Well, Cynthia was at this point, Martina, was passive aggressive. She waited on hold because she couldn't make up her mind what the other guys would do and then boom. So what was the question? Ah, good question. Yep, I agree, Sophie. Um, when do I recognize the brain is on? Well, Good, so I have two questions. The first question is, and we go back to my board. I kind of like my board. Maybe I should have two cameras at some point. Maybe one upon in my life, I will have two cameras pointing at you guys. So the first thing here, okay, give me a second. Write down your questions, I have to switch dogs. Hey baby girl, let's go inside, come on. <laughs> hey baby boy you want to go outside let's go outside you know you know the way out look you go you throw yeah exactly that's where you go 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 you can go through good job good okay i'm back Uh, looks good, right? Kind of. Yeah, looks good, better, best. Okay. So the question was, how do I understand if the brain on is off? So if the brain is on, I have sight. I have, what do I have? I have all my input information available. I can smell, I can taste, and I can listen. Good. So what happens if my brain is off? If my brain, not my brain, I mean the dog's brain, okay? I'm, I'm talking from dog's point of view. So if my dog brain is off, I still see to orient myself. I, I smell, but not really. I taste no more and I don't listen. Why? I'm telling you why. Because the processing of the sight goes into maximum picture, it goes into a still mode, 
and it speeds up the processing speed in order to see fast moves because the dog has to orient himself according to this environment. So imagine you have a slow motion movie and everything goes slow until something happens and all of a sudden you see a slow motion movie and everything goes slow and you process it. So if the brain is off, you the basic um, the basic senses are off. So the dog doesn't listen, the dog doesn't smell, and the dog doesn't taste. So if you want to check if the brain is on or off, the first thing I would do, and I have available, test him on the taste. Give him a treat and see if he can take the treat. Another is if you toss the treat on the floor, will he find the treat? No, he will not find the treat because he cannot smell it anymore. And the best thing of all is if you call your dog, your dog doesn't listen. So going to that, if we see a dog's side view, the first thing you have is the nose, then you have the eyes, then you have the ears, and you have the mouth. It's a cute dog, right? So from that perspective, the first thing that I lose is my nose. The next thing I lose is my taste. I still need my, my eyes though, and the next I lose is my ears. So these two I can test with a treat. And the listen I can taste with um, with my commands. And the sight basically is where the dog is focused. So at that point, he loses you from his sight. And why that? Can everybody see that? Is everybody on the same page? Good, Steve. You got that. Okay. Correct. So Sophie's on the same page. Steve gets that. Who else is on board? I know it's kind of too theoretical here, but all of you guys are most of them professionals. Uh, Vageli, are you on the same page? Good. Who is that? Donna, are you on the same page? Susan. Kara. Good. So, um, Susan, remember when we had worked with your, by the way, uh, I'm sorry, I heard that your dog died, right? My friend. I'm sorry for that. I really liked him. Good, you're processing. Good. Okay, apropos processing. Let's go back to my cute dog here. I tried to make it nice. We have a nose, we have this muzzle, we have the eyes, we have the ears, and we have the mouth. Okay, here's the tongue. Okay, let's make the tongue red. So nobody gets confused what that is. Okay. So... Let's see that part from, from another dog's perspective. What does the dog see if he looks from front? The first thing he sees is his nose. Okay? The next thing he sees is the dog's eyes. And the next thing he sees is the dog's tongue. And the next thing he sees are his dog's ears. Okay, so if I face that, the first thing that I will notice is the tongue is red. 
So if something happens and it changes, the first thing I recognize is, wait a minute, I got the red signal. Can you guys see that? I appreciate Susan. Yeah, I, I, you worked hard. I have still the video. So the first thing the dog sees is the tongue. So if if that dog who watches here with his huge eyes and sees the tongue cleaning the nose, those who ever worked ever in a laboratory know exactly if you want to test a new probe, the first thing you do is you clean the probe. Okay, so the probe at this point is the nose. It sticks its nose and takes a probe from every smell that she can get from that dog. And what happens once in a while, she needs to clean that probe to get the new smell from new conditions. So that signal, cleaning the probe to get more information, tells me what? The dog is processing. So the first and most important signal that a dog can send to another dog is I'm processing. That gives the other dog a clear signal. Whoa, wait, he's processing. So I don't move closer. I'll stop there and let him process. In other words, if you walk with your dog, watch his tongue because the dog the first thing he does on his walk is smelling and processing the next message the mouth closes the tongue goes in the mouth is closed what signal is that I stop processing. There is no reason for me to process anymore. I know exactly what's going on here. What do we get? We get a closed mouth. So before we had an open mouth and we says, dog's happy, he's processing, such a cute dog. And suddenly he stops processing and we have his closed mouth. And not even that, you see already the wrinkles. He says, uh-oh, I'm done processing. I better put my tongue in because somebody will bite it off. And what else do we get? We get these huge eyes because he stopped processing. He says, dude, did you see my strange eyes? I make sure I'm not losing your sight. The second signal. So, sorry, it's not the second signal. So the first signal is the tongue. The second signal is the mouth. The third signal is the eyes and the stiffness because that go together. So on one side in less than a second, you have one, two, three, four signals in one second. And those who watched the video today that I posted about the dog who snapped at the puppy in less than two seconds, it happened because all these signals were there. Nobody saw it. Does anybody have questions on that? And imagine we only watched the head, right? We didn't watch anything else because on the back, there is a whole other story. But for now, we are approaching dogs face to face, okay? So if you have two dogs approaching face to face, everybody wants to meet and suddenly somebody closes his mouth and he's like, oh, we have a problem, right? Okay, let me move away from here and he turns away. Now, the moment he turns away, you have a constellation and I'm going back here to green. And we go back to these two guys, 
Jeff, Jeff, and Zoe. <coughs> where they had confrontation and everybody sent his signals and then suddenly as a calming message Zoe makes his turn to show him his rest of his body I'll show it again. So we have Zoe here, uh, sorry, Jeff, who goes in confrontation, and Zoe who turns his body. So Zoe can, uh, Jeff, sorry, Jeff. So Jeff can see all his body and the ears and the mouth and the eyes and the tail. Jeff did perfect here. Because what he did, he gave him a second option, another point of view, so Joy wouldn't screw up. Instead of continue being confrontational, he made a turn and says, you know what? Do you see what's going on here? We're done meeting. This is how I feel like. My mouth is closed. My tail is high. My hackles are kind of. My ears are back. Don't dare cutting my way off. Okay, so suddenly by turning his body, he basically creates a safety barrier and he says, that's my line, don't cross it. If you cross that line, do you see what's going on here? Do you see my tail, my eyes? I'm a red flag. Does anybody have any questions? Is everybody on the same page? So first and important, only the brain on can read calming message. If the brain is off, it doesn't. So the handler's job, give me a second. Cut it off. Thank you. The handler's job is to retain the dog's brain on. That's our main focus. If you lose your dog's brain, then you lose your dog because then your dog doesn't listen anymore. Okay. And for those who know already, you remember my diagram that gives you a range from zero to nine and says over six the brain is shutting off and after seven the brain is off so if you want to train your dog be between three and four because five you're close to brain to be shut off so when you train your dog you want to have the brain 100 percent on and here is the brain curve the brain is high and then it goes low, and here the reflex is going high. So this is the brain, and this is the reflex. So the more reflex the dog is, the less communications you have, the less control you have, you're losing your dog between six and seven. If you lose that, your dog is going into the red zone. 
And you know what that means. The dog will not have the brain capacity to process. So here is a detail that everybody talks about and nobody really can explain. And for those folks who are like in the 70s, do you remember the old cassette players, right? You remember the cassette player, right? Does it, does it make sense here, the cassette player? So there were old organs you were playing and they had this echo, 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 right? So what happened here is there was a tape and it had here an endless loop. Good. And that tape will turn. So if I mark here echo, it will go all the way back and come back again to the tape recorder. That's the, that's the tape head. And every time that goes here, it goes here echo. So the faster that turns, the faster I get my echo. Why I'm saying that? Because that is the dog's brain, temporary brain. It records all the events in a loop of about 20 seconds. And then he forgets. So the higher the stress level, the faster the speed of that tape. Meaning is the less memory I have available. Meaning is less information I have to input. So the more stressed my dog is, the less he can remember. But that speed gives him such an accuracy in that short amount of time that he can see a fly making her wings like that. While if he's calm, he wouldn't see even the fly. So what happens if the dog is stressed? His processor speeds up so fast that he can make 14 decisions per second. 14 decisions per second. A pilot on the Air Force can make 12 to 14 decisions per second, right? That makes him a number one pilot. He can handle to take care of a plane that basically is done on a free fall. All this decision, orienting the alpha, making decisions. These are 14 decisions per second. And trust me, hey, and leave it, it's already two seconds past. Your dog made already 24 decisions. You don't want your dog going to the red zone. That here is the red zone. His processing speed is so fast, you don't see things happen anymore. And this is where people say, well, my dog attacked the other dog out of nowhere. Well, yeah, because you just lost five seconds of his life. You didn't see these five seconds. You just saw the last one. And that's what happened. And that's because the stress level went high. And instead of being down here at three, the dog was here at six. Good. A small detail that is not in any book because some of you asked me already, oh, is there a book that I can buy? No, you can't. It's not written yet. Yep, exactly, Sophie. So, Echoplex, exactly. Thank you very much, Steve. Exactly, Martina. So I'm just reading all your, your stuff, what you just wrote.
Good. Time for questions. I answer any questions. Basically, it was a Q&A, but I think you got a better picture of what's going on in the dog's brain if that freaking switches off. So how do you get your brain on of a dog's brain? Well, first of all, you try not to get it off because once it's off, you basically have to use CPR kind of thing situation. So try not to lose your dog. And that's why I say the first thing you do with your puppy, your dog comes from rescue, is build up trust. Show him your intentions. Show what you're up to. Make clear that you have solutions for your dog and not causing any problems. Try not to confuse your dog. Be very minimal with your instructions. Don't talk, oh, cute dog, hug, blah, 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 blah. Keep it minimal. Look. Here, come, sit, stay, wait, keep a tonic, don't vibrate voice, don't get angry, don't get sad. <laughs> Monotonic voice, create a minimum of differences between one level and the other. Always be cool, always be nice, always be calm. You don't need to be assertive. So this calm, assertive BS is basically wrong. You have to be stable in your emotions. Be a guide. Don't create problems to your dog. That way, you're far away from him shutting off. So, Steve, does this answer a lot of questions that you had? OK, so when my dog is done resting, Well, yeah, because Jeff was bouncing around happy equals equals excitement. So that level of excitement was very close to six. And Zoe didn't like that. Zoe knew that his guy is becoming unstable. And that's why he interfered. So it was nothing wrong on the picture. The picture was fine. The video was good. Dogs were fine. But. Zoe picked up on that change that was almost going into the unstable. And when Zoe stepped in to fix Jeff, then Charlie stepped up and says, oh, whoa, guys, no, 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 no. We take care of business. Like, don't get in a fight. We're good. We're fine. Let's cut it off. So uh, B map. So when my dog's laying down resting, then hears a noise, laps up barking. Yeah, exactly. He has zero tolerance. It's just reflex because the brain is not on. And that's a safety measure. Okay? That's why we have dogs. We have dogs because they are capable of zero to 0 0.1 be from sleeping into 100% alert and ready to fight even if the brain is off. And that is because they are playing all day long how to fight. So what we see outside as playing and being roughhousing is basically educate themselves what to do if the brain is off. And meaning, take over that job. Don't let the dog educate how to fight. Teach the dog how to think when he gets up from zero in a one second. First of all, teach the dog how to orient himself when he wakes up, he should know that you are present and he should check in with you first. That should be a reflex, especially in working dogs and protection dogs. If the dog acts on his own, it's only because you're not there. Yeah, exactly. That's why they watch dogs. You cannot surprise a dog. Okay. The closer you can get to a dog, surprisingly, it's the closer it gets get to a bite. And yes, Charlie is confident. Why is she confident? Because she has knowledge. And everybody knows that, and everybody respects that. Charlie is not there because she's smart. Charlie is there because everybody else respects her. But I want Steve to be that Charlie. I want to be Charlie to trust Steve, and Zoe to trust Steve, 
and Joe to trust Steve. And Steve has Charlie as his translator. If something goes wrong, you're like, hey, Charlie, are you okay with that? And she's like, mm, I don't know about that. And you're like, oh, bye, guys, cut it off. It's like, thank you, Charlie. Good. So. Having dogs, it's not easy. Having a simple dog is easy. Working with rescues is not easy at all. And I really respect everybody who has rescue and works with rescue and does the work that Steve does because Steve has this kind of natural talent to pick things up. But now he would get a better picture because he knows where everything's coming from. It's just they're popping up. He knows where this picture is coming from and who sent that picture. So general message, and Martina knows it already. When I work with a dog, I don't talk. If I meet a client and evaluate his dog, I don't talk. I just watch. Watch and listen what's going on here. Who does what, why, and who is related with whom, and who is watching whom, and who is attracted to whom, and I want to get that picture. And dogs do the same. The first thing he does in your house, he says, he looks to the right, he looks to the left, he sees whoever is here, and is like, oh, guys, now I know what's going on. I'll take care of business. Exactly, Sophie. Zoe cross Jeff, who wanted to go in the house. Correct. Mm-hmm. So if you want to go deeper into that and learn that skills, that was a short introduction. I have even, that's like 1% of what you should know. I'm happy to do one-on-one -on -one classes to a special price, which only today, okay? So my today's super crazy deal is $200 off the regular price. And that's one day deal because I'm crazy. That's a good question, Steve. Thank you so much. Um, well, every donation that comes in goes to dog food. And I'm happy. I'm, I'm, thank you very much for, for doing so. So donations go to either Facebook um, it's training at that's PayPal. But you can also go to Facebook Messenger. And there is a donation button. And you can send something, whatever you want. There is, there is no price on it. Everything helps. So that's easy. Um, that's that. What we did here is not for regular people who just have a dog who wants to be teach, sit, and stay. That's kind of high level train the trainer training course. Okay. 
but I do have, per I, can, I can do personal classes with each individual, which I think is the best because I can go case by case base. And whenever you have a need, you just call in and says, hey, I have a problem going on, I have a rescue, this is what he's doing, I need some help, let's do brainstorming. It's not a big deal, it's just 20, 20 minutes is fine, you don't need more. 20 minutes, since you know what you're doing because you're a professional, I just give you a hint and you got it straight. Uh, we don't need to talk around. If you go into a shelter and you need to do evaluation, um, explain this again. Uh, well, the explain is if you need help and you are in a shelter or you have a dog in your house and you need help, you basically send me a text message, you call in and ask for a session. I have a 20 minute session for a 20 minute price and people who are on the group have a special discount so feel free to give me a buzz oh good question well 200 off of five sessions and we solve basically any problem we have so a regular price is 585. Yes, so it's 200 off. Correct, it's a set of five. Right. So whatever you want, just text me and we can talk about it. Because that sessions exactly because one session will last a lifetime because once you get the point you know what's going on you don't need to call me anymore you're done it's like how do i open a door well you do this and you do that and you can open every door and once you understand because it's basically common sense that's what's good on holistic dog training. It's not rocket science. It's really common sense. But unfortunately, it's too common sense for some people who think things are complicated. Oh, yeah, well, you need to click, use a clicker, and you know, do this and that, and you have to be assertive, and you have to be the pack leader. Like, come on, be, be serious. Just common sense. Just understand your dog. Learn to read your dog's intentions, understand what your dog needs. And once you, you comply to his needs, then he says, dude, you know everything. I'm, I'm, I never deal with stuff anymore. Whenever I have a problem, I just ask you and you solve me the problem. That's exactly what we want here. So I should remember everybody to sign up for... Um, let me remember where that is. Here we are. Into my uh, mailing list. So you guys can basically be up to date with everything and some seminars we coming up. Because I have some seminars coming up. And I would like you to know this. So the holistic mailing list. I'll post it here. Well, we have different options. We have Skype, we have FaceTime, we have Facebook and we have a phone call. So I have clients who do not have a Wi-Fi. Now that's fine. It's not a big deal. I can still work on the phone. I mean, I have, when you tell me what's going on, I really see the picture. I know what's going on. Just, just tell me what you see and I get it and we, we can walk it through. It's like talking to a mechanic and you say, you know, my thing that's next to the other thing and that there's air in it, 
does not have air anymore. And the technician says, I know, you're talking about that tire, right? Uh, yeah, exactly. The thing, the wrong thing that they air, that, that's a tire. So. <laughs> Sophie, right, no puppies go home. Good, let's close this part. Uh, thank you, this is Roman with Roman's Skin and Training. And I want you guys to be your dog's best trainer. So thank you very much for joining and uh, see you on next lab. So, okay, so we are off the record.